But I think this is nothing new in comparison to what's been going in Egypt uh, in the last uh, five years uh, since uh, the coup in 2013. It's not the first time we've seen um, uh, tens of even hundreds of people being sentenced to death. Uh, there has even been uh, other cases where um, almost 500 and up to 1,000 people were sentenced in one case to uh, death. But um, uh, speaking from the point of being a defendant in this case and um, a journalist who was uh, detained on the 14th of August 2013 while covering uh, these protests, uh, I believe it, it shows uh, uh, more of um, a lack of hope of any uh, possible, um, uh, you know, um, solution for the situation in Egypt now. Mm -hmm. But I think more of um, a political message rather than uh, just uh, the, of the law happening here. And Abdullah, let's talk a bit more about that. What do you think that this tells us about Egypt at the moment under Sisi? Well, um, I am more of, um, I would say, you know, I, I look to things as, as a journalist who's uh, covered Egypt in 2012 and 2013. Uh, but I think in terms of uh, the rule of law, human rights, um, abuses and um, general situation, uh, looking to Egypt at the moment, it shows that the country is um, uh, has no light at the end of the tunnel, as, as uh, we could say. It shows that the country is, uh, you know, things are getting more worse, and um, it's uh, uh, it, it, you know, um, uh, there's no honest wish for, for uh, from any part of this regime to uh, solve things, um, as, uh, as we see in, in, in today's sentences, and we as we see in other, uh, you know, uh, ongoing cases that um, most uh, people have seen death sentences and life sentences as well. Okay. And Abdullah, you were in prison alongside some of those 75 people who were sentenced today. Who are they? And, and tell us more about them. Well, this case is uh, one of the biggest that um, Egypt has seen since the coup back in 2013. We have almost up to 715. Uh, there are no accurate numbers because uh, people rounded up in the square at the time back in August um, 2013. Uh, this case, um, I would say, literally has everyone from the country. It has people all across the country from the southern parts, from uh, Sinai, from the Delta. So uh, I have seen inside uh, when I was in prison people from all the 26 um, governorates of Egypt. Uh, it has different age, different uh, social backgrounds. It's more of a combination of um, the whole image of the country. But um, uh, today's verdict was not expected, I would say. Since, um, look, uh, you know, as, as a person who's been in this case and um, uh, as uh, some lawyers as well thought maybe looking at this judge's record, things wouldn't be as bad as, as uh, it happened today. Among these 75 people, I personally know uh, others who, um, uh, you know, who we, were, we shared the same cell for months and um, some of them are close friends uh, to me. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's hard, especially for those who are still in Egypt, to um, uh, seek a, a way out. But um, I think uh, the harder part is not for me or even for those who are, have left uh, jail already. Half of, of the case um, was released on bail during the the first uh, year uh, in tw from 2013 to 2014. But the harder part is for those who've already been in jail for five years and, uh, you know, uh, even at uh, the worst, we could see them go on for uh, months to come uh, if they see a verdict for uh, the appeal to happen. That takes uh, as well months or even up to two years after the verdict itself. So that is, is, is the harder part. But um, I think also it's not just about... Um, People who are back in prison is also about journalists. So we have um, another journalist in jail who is uh, Mahmoud uh, Shakur, known by the name Shao Khan, who was a photojournalist and has been in prison for five years now. He's also, uh, he could also face um, harsh sentences such as life sentences or even uh, you know, um, um, something he doesn't really, uh, or others in, who have been in prison for five years um, feel hopeful about. And uh, I think it's. Uh, these are the people that really need uh, uh, more consideration and attention at the moment. Absolutely. And, uh, Abdullah, let's talk about you for a moment. What's going to happen to you when you receive your verdict on September the 8th? Because you were a very high-profile case. You were on a hunger strike for over 100 days and then released. And, of course, you're a journalist. Well, I haven't... Uh 
you know, I haven't really made my decision at the moment. I am looking at different options uh, on, on what to do next um, uh, when the verdict comes out. Uh, I have made all options possible um, on the table. And uh, nonetheless, whatever the verdict comes out, uh, be it uh, acquittal or even life sentence, whatever, you know, the destiny holds for me, I don't think I will make it back to Egypt anytime soon. So this is, is, is uh, something that, at least from an emotional side, uh, uh, strikes me as, as something um, a bit uh, emotional. But uh, for me, I haven't, uh, I have made all options possible from looking into my future as a journalist, uh, because uh, this, this, I believe, would, cons would affect my journalism career, because uh, I wouldn't be able probably to get uh, new documents move around or or uh, get my uh, papers um, renewed from the Egyptian authorities. So um, I haven't come to a conclusion yet, because uh, since I came out of prison back in 2014, I just went on with my life, and, and um, I went back to my work at Al Jazeera, and I and haven't really thought that things could come to this point. So it's, uh, it's something difficult to make a decision at the moment, but um, I have been uh, speaking to uh, lawyers and to uh, uh, colleagues to see um, what is the next move that I would make.